and three, two, one, boom. And we are back with another episode of Socratic Gamers. This is Socratic Dialogue. We kind of did away with the uh, weekly roundups, given the fact that we have the ability to pump out episodes, although we haven't really been doing too, too much of that. Uh, but I did, actually. Well, we did two last week. And the two before. That's true. Yeah, that's so. That's like we've we've increased by two hundred percent. So, but I mean, this is uh, this is just one for the week. Um, but yeah, Socratic dialogue. We take on one topic that we thought was cool, that we think is cool. Yeah, and I think then, we're uh, we're changing that. Right, we're not doing the normal. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, we we don't do the four, the weekly roundup. So uh, this topic for this episode is where do we go when we die? Mm. All right. So fun fact. Um, I was I was hanging out with uh, Tara at this party, like we we weren't together yet, and then um, oh. she she's saying like, oh, this is so <laughs> it's like kind of boring, and I was like, okay, well, what wouldn't what wouldn't be boring, like to topic wise, right? Because right. we were just like killing yeah. time, mm-hmm. we were at, like a mutual party, and then she's like, well, where do you think we go when we die? And I was like, oh, oh, that's new, because you know, like people don't usually think about this thing. And like uh, when you hear something weird like that, you're just oh, if they like, do do think about it, they think about it normally, or personally, like, mostly, yeah. like not really talk about it in public. That's true. Ah, uh, yeah, true. I guess yeah, you're right. Right. Not many people like to talk about it because it's like so taboo. But it's funny because if you look at like different religions and stuff, they they've always tackled with this problem. Yeah. You know, like um, the Mesopotamians, they believed. Oh, oh, I forgot that. Gilgamesh, he went to go seek out death. To overcome it, mm-hmm. and uh, I think it was Gilgamesh, yeah. And then like Jesus obviously overcame death because he lived forever. Um, what's what's death in Hinduism? For I don't really know that. I, I mean, know there's like Vishnu the Destroyer, but they don't really talk about like afterlife and stuff. Well, the Greeks it, have Hades, and uh, um, is it something world. to do? There's something to do with karma though, or. Oh yeah, yeah, reincarnation. And reincarnation, yeah, yeah, yeah. but then it's also like uh, where uh, you would uh, like to stop reincarnating would be to accumulate enough positivity in one end, and then you like so basically you become one with you, the universe you, after or something yeah, like that. You like you like move your way through the caste systems, Not right? Like, caste systems necessarily. No, but like but you yeah, die, and then you're like a. Then you move up the next level, and you die, and then you move up the next level if you have like a good karmic load. I guess so. Yeah, I mean that those are pretty. There's so many different variations of understanding because it's such an old culture that these everyone has different interpretations. That's true. Yeah, I see what you're that saying. happens through through time because of other colonization may bring new n- new understanding or different understanding mm-hmm. that may yeah. change the meaning. So we may have lost the original meaning. Of what reincarnation is what, or death? What what it actually means or what? Reincarnation. What it, yeah, like what oh, do they yeah, mean yeah, by so that? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, yeah, 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 for sure. So, um, uh, like, well, yeah. So you know, uh, I mean, I guess the mainstream one right now would be yeah, reincarnation, that fits with that and Buddhism. And, but one uh, could argue that you're reincarnated. That's also in this one life. That's also what you know they. What I mean? you that's like the, that's what I'm saying. That, kind of thing. That's also what what I've also heard being said as well. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, what is the whole thing of death? Oh, uh, also the Egyptians, they they would take, like, the blue water lily, which is, like, DMT enriched, and then they'd say that, like, they, they'd have, like, mm-hmm. travels into the another realm. Right. They're actually going to do that in a university. I forgot which one, but they're going to, like, medicine drip DMT into you so that you could prolong your stay in the DMT world so that like, you can, like, explore death. Okay. But, like... I kind of see it like with that stuff, it's it's subjective, you know what I mean? Like unless we're in the same world and we see the exact same thing, mm-hmm. then it's like then it's just your own observation. But if two people are observing the exact same thing, then independently, so it's like we'll we'll undergo DMT or something, you and I, yeah. and then we'll be like, what did you see? What did I see? Independently, and if they match up, then you know that like you were looking at something else that's mm-hmm. not there. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. I think like. Everyone is so obsessed with, like, this plane of existence. Yeah. One of the other ones is, like, oh, maybe we're just, like, on one really long, like, drug trip right now. 
You know, like I have heard like, what if we're just aliens and then we like hit, take a hit from the bong and then we're like in this world, like this, this tangible world that we're in now. And then we like die and then we right. wake up. But I kind of feel like all of that is like a, mm, it's sort of like your mind is like not wanting to die. Yeah. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. so personally, my view on death is that it, you know, nerd, like N E R D. No one ever really dies. No, I don't know. No, nerd, Pharrell Williams. No. Nope. You've never heard of Pharrell Williams. Pharrell Williams, yeah. Yeah, N E R D. You've never heard of N E R D. No. Oh wow. Um, I don't follow Pharrell Williams. No, it was like all right. Well, whatever. Who cares? Um, <laughs> so it was like a big thing during our time. Anyways, nerd. Really? Uh, I didn't. Uh, maybe I was a little older. I guess I don't know. Rock star. Rock star. Like. All right, never mind. Like the Rockstar Games? No. But, <laughs> all right, whatever. It's great. Don't, don't worry about that. Anyways, okay. <laughs> so um, no one ever really dies. And then, um, what's his name? Einstein, energy can't be created or destroyed. It can only be transferred. Yeah. So my view on death is this. You can't leave something you invariably been a part of. So it's like, it's like you're in an ocean and then you have a wave. Right, Mm -hmm. and the wave comes up, and then the wave disappears, and then that's kind of like it's it's always a constant flow of change. Right, we're all just like molecules shifting in and out of things, right? Mm -hmm. Like different forms. It's only the mind that dies. Yeah. Right. So if you have no cerebral cortex, if you have no spine, you have no mind. Mm -hmm. But do you have energy? Like, do you have matter? Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. it's not the circle of life. No, the, totally, exactly, exactly. And it's like only this metaphysical thought, a.k.a. the mind, that's mm-hmm. the only thing that's that's even, like, aware of its own death. Right. Like, I don't think our dog has an awareness of death. Mm-hmm. You know, she's just living, and then one day she'll be like, oh, this person's not there anymore. She can't comprehend it. Right. Right, she doesn't have, like, a prefrontal cortex that's big enough to, like, logically work mm-hmm. through that rationale. Okay. So, like, I don't think death is real. Yeah. Transformation is real. Mm-hmm. But there is no such thing as death. It's just, like, it's the cessation of mind. Okay. Do you agree or disagree? Like, cessation? What does that mean? Like stopping. Of the mind? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, one can argue that. Because, like, like what, what, would, what would death be? Like, what is death? Let's start with that. What is death? Yeah, that's... It depends on how you want to... Like the stopping of your experience. Yeah. Right? So then who is the only thing having the experience? The mind. Yeah. Right? So that's what I'm saying. Like, death really is just the cessation of mind. Like the stopping of mind. Yeah. So that's what... That's the main thing, right? That, I mean, that that's... If you want to... Like, that's how I... Uh, how I would view it more like I'm not me anymore right yeah totally totally so that means when I'm dead I'm dead yeah and and like I think that once we've comprehended life's existence the first thing you think of is oh no this could end yeah and then I think that's what people that's what like like the story of Gilgamesh who like went to go seek out death to like overcome it Mm -hmm. Um, I think if you look at it, he was probably just realizing his own experience, and he's like, oh, this could actually end. And okay. if it ends, how can I make it not end? And I think that's what everyone seeks. Like, they don't want to stop their experience. But mm-hmm. if you don't stop your experience, don't you think you'd get tired of your experience over time? Would you get tired of your experience? Yeah. You know, like, let's say you could live forever. Yeah. Would you, would you not get tired of it? Well, that's what they think. That's what they say. Or how do we know? I well, I feel like personally, like I felt that in my own life, where it's like, it's like, wow, this is long now. Like I, I remember when I was a kid, I would always think about like, oh, right, well, I'm just gonna well, die depends soon. Well, depends on. Well, yeah, it depends on. Now I'm like freaking thirty. I'm like, <laughs> damn, this is just not ending. Not in a negative way. I mean, just like, wow, it's like I'm living a lot longer than I thought I would. Right. Just because of like you know, yeah, just live for your die young. <laughs> <laughs> like you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. I don't know. And like, 
But the, the interesting thing is if death is just the cessation of mind, mm -hmm. then you can actually have what they call like the little death, which is meditation. Because meditation is ultimately you stopping your mind. We, ultimately, too, we die every time we go to sleep. Yeah, it's a new right? you. No, no, but like uh, your I, mind I, isn't I you like yeah. you're not consciously there when yeah, you're sleeping. Yeah. Why are we so yeah. afraid of death, but we're not afraid to go to sleep at mm -hmm. night? You know, I've heard that so many times, and then it's always been like, oh, what does that actually mean? But it just means that there's no conscious awareness awake during your sleep, right. unless you're dreaming, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like when you go into like a deep sleep, mm -hmm. like where you wake up in the morning, you're like, oh, did, was I sleeping? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, good. Another good example. I'm reading Graham Hancock's book, uh, and he had a seizure. And then in his chapter, he's like, the, his final book. Yeah. Well, so he is dying, eh? Like, he is, he's, he yeah, says, he I'm on borrowed time. Yeah, he's You that. know, so this, that could have been, like, one of the last times we ever saw him. Mm -hmm. but anyways, so, like, he said that, like, oh, I woke up in a hospital bed. And I was like, wait, what happened? And his, his brain had deleted the last two weeks leading up to the, uh, to the seizure. Right. So he, like, he literally jumped in time, woke up, and was like, what just happened? Mm -hmm. So it's like couldn't one say that about our own experience like you know what i mean like yeah, yeah, you yeah. die and then it's like oh no when will i get reincarnated but you probably don't you have no comprehension of time right right you just wake up yeah. as like a baby mm. destined to do it yeah, over yeah. again yeah yeah so what i think i think our life experience is like you know how they say like you are the universe realizing itself mm -hmm. so if you can't leave this like you, you are made out of matter out of energy not like in an esoteric way like literally you are made out of like kinetic energy and like matter right like you know like yeah, scientifically yeah. you are made out of energy mm -hmm. and like the fact that you can realize that you are this thing that's made out of energy i think that is the universe realizing itself that's what they meant mm -hmm. you know do you disagree or no <laughs> right like like you are literally the universe made out of the same atoms. Yes. I mean, that's, just realizing your own existence. I think that's something that Neil deGrasse Tyson yeah, he, he said that. Yeah. always tries to push. Yeah, to totally, totally. Yeah. But it's like, it's interesting because it's like we, we get so caught up in the play of life. Mm -hmm. You know, we're like, we're so obsessed with the transient nature of it right. that we can't just accept the change of it. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we're so like, why does it have to change? Why is it always moving? But it's like, it just does that. That's life. Right. You know, like mm. to, to, to hold on is what creates suffering. Attachment creates suffering. You know, that's what the Buddha said. Yeah. Right. It's like, but right. what did he mean by attachment? He really meant like holding on to anything. Like it's not yours to have or to hold. Right. But just having the experience is what was the magical point in the first place. Mm hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I think, like, I think anybody... Okay, so what do you think about afterlife experiences? You know, when people, like, they die and they come back and they're like, oh, I was in this world of, like, I saw my body floating over top and, like, blah, 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 blah. Like, I saw these, these like, angels come around me and stuff. Uh, I mean, that's just something to do with the brain so from what I've heard. okay so so what i believe all right so check this out your mind when you're when you're fully experiencing something when you're fully present in the moment mm -hmm. you're not actually you're not actually seeing anything it only takes a recollection to see something right. so you're playing this video game right now yeah we're having this conversation mm. then i go what did you just say you have to jump back in time in your mind yeah you know what i'm saying and then be like what did you just say? And then that'll be a figment of your imagination because it'll never be the exact thing. It'll always be like a question of what we said. Right. Right. Unless you listen to the recording. But that is life's experiences in a nutshell. You're always just like recalling things. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So like when people say, oh, I was in a different dimension or like I saw angels, you're recalling something that your mind could have created. It's right. just a pseudo memory. Yeah. Every th memory is a pseudo memory mm -hmm. in, in essence, because like the, the sheer fact that you have to recall it means you have to create it in your mind. And if you create it in your mind, it's open to interpretation. Yeah. It's open to error. Yeah. Right. 
It's never the same. It's never the same twice, you know? Mm -hmm. And like that, and it's that thought experiment kind of proves the fact that there is no such thing as an afterlife. Because if you, if you died and you came back, how could you even recall it? <laughs> you also don't have the sensory input to recall. You didn't have a brain when you died. You didn't have a cerebral cortex when you died. You didn't have your senses when you died. The cerebral cortex is the primary one because it's connected to your like senses. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's your yeah. spine. Yeah. Yeah. So like, if you didn't have those things to work with, how can you even recall something that you went into? You just have like an experience. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and that's what the Buddhists say, like the, like the Zen practitioners, when they go like, uh, it is an experience of not knowing. Like when you go into meditation, mm -hmm. no one can ever tell you what meditation is. Right. And it's, that's, yeah. it's not like esoteric. It's just literally you can't, because if I have to recall what meditation is, it isn't meditation because I'm not in the experience. I'm, I'm faking the experience. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You can only know what okay. meditation feels like. Right. You know? Through experience, through sensation, or uh, yeah, like you, like you could feel it, yeah. right? You're like, it felt like this, but even that is like a recall, so th that you can't even trust that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. So it's like, what can you trust in this world? Like nothing. Yeah, I know. You know, a good example. All right, when you get really good at like working with your own mind, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. like. Like as a kid, or maybe even recently, I don't know. But as a kid, <laughs> yeah, big thing when I was a kid, okay, you just like fake sick, and your mind can make that real. Oh, like that, yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you're just like, you just like, it, it happens all the time. It's like somatoform disorder. There's so many people that like they don't have any physical ailments, but what happens is the mind has made you sick. Yeah, and then they're like, they're like, oh, that's, that's not real. You can get over it, but it's like, no, this is just showing you the power of the mind. Placebo effects. Yeah, yeah placebo effects. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's very much true. Yeah. So, like, all right, let's say you get slapped in the face, and then you're like, okay, mm -hmm. that was a good experience. I remember when we were, we were doing martial arts. Yeah. Um, we didn't do it through slaps, but we did it through punches. So we'd, like, punch each other. Okay. And it, it was, like, crazy training. Yeah. Honestly, like, I was thinking about this. Like, mm -hmm. the first martial arts academy I went to was all about mental training. It was very culty, but yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. like, really into mental training. Right. Um, so, like, we'd, like, punch each other. Mm -hmm. Or, like, a great, any of the Shania, you'd be, like, whipped, right? Right. And then, like, you'd have to translate that experience in your mind as being a good experience. Or, like, right. I am stronger than this experience. Mm -hmm. So, if you can do that, then what is real? Right. Okay. You know what I mean? Because, like, because yeah, 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 yeah. then everything becomes a, a trick, you know? Mm. But But, like, a master... Of one, um, a true master is a master of oneself, you know, and like when you learn those things, those little tricks, yeah, like when people are like, how do you how do you output so much work for me, right? Mm -hmm. But it's like you don't think I get stressed, like what? <laughs> of course you do, right. but like I know the mental trick to switch it. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. it's like um, so like going from like a full time job to like this to like. Uh, doing other person people's work and then like all that it's like oh you're you're accruing so much like you're doing so much mm -hmm, right mm -hmm. but it's like all, all i do in transit is like no no that was done and this is now okay like i do that yeah, all the yeah, time you yeah, know i'm like yeah. the day's done don't even think about that anymore it's over yeah. think about what you're about to do next you know mm -hmm. but that's just a mental trick but if I was obsessed about what I had just done on top of thinking about what I'm going to do next, on top of what I'm going to do tomorrow, then how could you possibly operate that way? Right. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Because you'd be always thinking about, like, it would be compounded. It wouldn't just be one thing anymore. It'd be like one thing plus that thing plus that thing plus that thing. Mm -hmm. And that's why people go crazy. That's why they can't handle the stress. Because oh, yeah, they can't yeah. compartmentalize. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I thought this was about death. But it is about death, though, True. That, right? Because, like, yeah. the mind is the only thing that believes it's alive. And this is how the mind works. So yeah. in understanding how the mind works, you understand that death is just a figment of your ma imagination. Mm -hmm. It's not real. Right. You know, if you, looked at, if you looked at the whole universe as an organism, or no, no, here, here's a good example. Um... If you 
if you looked at the ocean, how could you separate one piece of the ocean when it's all whole? Okay. Well, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. like just looking at uh, looking at a cup of water, mm-hmm. okay? How can you differentiate one thing from that cup of water? Mm-hmm. Or, or here, actually, hold on, hold on. Here's, here's a better example. This is the exact example that they use in like yogic texts. Um, there's salt and then there's water, okay? Okay. Then you could see the two differences, right? You're like, okay, there's salt, there's water. And then they're like, okay, put the salt in the water and then stir it. Now where's the salt? It's a part of the water now. Right. You know what I'm saying? And it's like you can't differentiate that when you look at it at that scale. So that's kind of like how the universe is. We're seeing it on a molecular level. Like I'm seeing myself. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing you. But if you zoom out, you're like there is no you or me. Right. There's just like the universe operating under this like chaos. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that's that's how I related it back to death. Cuz it's like yeah, yeah. You, you're mm-hmm. you're not dying. There is nobody <laughs> dying. So why do we do that? Why did uh I think it's like a defense mechanism. Yeah. Like I really I really believe to... this. You know there's a part in your remember you showed me this video yeah. where it's like um why do you remember that show? Which show? Like seeking death and then like they they on the brain, they electrocuted one like neuron in the brain, and then they're like, "Oh, I could sense somebody behind me, like God behind me." Remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that, that, like, the science show. Yeah, yeah. So like, there was vaguely this, remember that. Yeah. So there's, but that stuck with me for a long time. So like, there's this science show, and like they're proving that death is like a figment. No, like God is a figment of your imagination. Mm-hmm. Right. We've created God for multiple reasons, yeah. but ultimately, it's to curb our um, what do you call that? It's like it's to curb our, um, our like. I'm trying to think of the exact word, but basically, it's like it's like to curb our uh, debt, or right. then, not debt, or like a pressure, our self pressure. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, like if there was no God, then we'd be like, oh man, we're all alone. Like all of the pressure is on me. Mm-hmm. Like you're shifting blame. That's what it is. Right. Yeah. Like you're you're like, okay, it's not about me anymore. Like God's got it in His hands. Yeah. So you're like shifting, the inability for you to just like, do it. It's like a crutch. Mm-hmm. I can't deal with this, so I'm gonna create this third party thing that's gonna deal with it for me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, I, I, I mean, has it like? I think there may have been a reason why we created it, in the first place. I don't know if it's detrimental now. What what I in believe some ways. for sure, for sure. What I believe is, uh, it was it was an old reli- Well, from reading the Graham Hancock stuff and going to his um, his lectures, I think it was a, an old religion based off of psychedelics. Mm-hmm. Like think about it. Yeah. You're you're going to take like this thing and you're going to like self poison yourself to the point of like seeing things and then you're going to rely too much on what you've seen then what is the reality of the situation? That's why I really like Zen because like Zen is all about like not attaching to these idols and just and just being in the experience for this the sake of its experience. Right. You know what I'm saying? Is there beneficials? I mean, some some minds can't handle it. Somebody's gonna listen to this podcast and turn it off and be like, "No, yeah. they're wrong." Right. But I'm I'm just saying like, I don't know if everyone should be like that. True. Um, yeah. No. That's what I'm saying. Like, there needs. Well, actually, that's a great segue. So the the real question is like, so then, are there segments of society, which there are? It's like, what not do you mean? so okay. So like the way we're thinking right now. Yeah. When we record this and whoever's listening to it and they're like jiving with it, they're like, oh yeah, this is actually, that's kind of the reason why we do it, at mm-hmm. least why I do it. It's like, so you know that the other person on the end is not alone. Right. So it's like they're thinking of it and they stumble upon this and they're like, wow, these guys are thinking the same way as me. It's like, yeah, because people think, it's sort of like um, when I when I came up with that nihilism thing of like, um, 
like I was very like nihilistic. Mm-hmm. And then it was like, oh, that philosopher had already thought of the exact same things as me. Yeah. So it's like in him putting his work out there, when somebody stumbles upon it at the right moment, they're like, oh, I'm not alone. People have been thinking about this way for centuries, if not millennia. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So, so to circle back on your, your thing of like, do we all need to know it or like, you know, it's like, no, we don't. But the people that already have an inclination towards this, it's just like, you're not alone. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because some people can't handle it. No, no, no. Yeah, I know. Uh, They're all in different. We we need accountants. We need bread makers. That's what I'm saying. You know, like we need plumbers. We need like. If we didn't have dumb people in society, not that you're dumb, but if we didn't have dumb people in society, if we didn't have, um, if we didn't have type A, how would we have type B? Okay. You know what I mean? Because like then if you don't have contrast, if you don't have duality, how can you know what the other thing is? Like if you don't, exactly. if you don't have hate, how can you know what love is? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You have to understand fully hate in order to be like, oh no, the complete opposite of it is this. Mm-hmm. Because if you didn't have if you didn't have hate, then everything would just be like mediocre. Yeah. There, there'd be no. So we can't say dumb necessarily. But like from their perspective, from my perspective, it's dumb. From their perspective, I might be dumb. Okay. See right. what I'm saying? It's like now I can accept that. <laughs> but that's this the duality I'm saying. Right. Like we need we need we need the yin and the yang. Yeah. And that's why I'm super into um, Taoism, because it's all about the yin and yang. So like you have the yin. Like the the soft, the yang, the hard, mm-hmm. and then you have the Tao, which is both of them together, right? Which is like it supersedes both because it's like it's it is the totality. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's like there's you, then there's me, then there's the universe, right? You know? Yeah. It's an interesting topic. What happens if Einstein was wrong, though? What do you mean? We aren't one with the universe. If we're not one with the universe, then I would say... Well, what did it say? No, the energy thing. Sorry, not that. Energy can't be created or destroyed? Well, so you're saying that some energy can be destroyed? Yeah. I mean, where does it go then? I'm not, though. I'm just saying. No, no, no. But I mean, like, thought experiment-wise, like, where does it go? But where thought experiment-wise is based on that, right? No, no, no. I'm but saying, like, like, if some new thought happens... Right, no, no. But, but, like, logically thinking about it... Well, lo- we're logically thinking based on what we know now. Okay. If something new comes up. So then you're saying that like things can evaporate into existence? Yeah. I mean, the things that they find new in quantum science. But like what particularly in quantum science? No, no, I'm just saying like there are certain things in quantum science that doesn't match with general physics. Right. But that is about scalability though, because gravity changes, um, at a molecular level as well as on a space level. Mm-hmm. So, like, the mathematics that we have on Earth are not going to be the same mathematics in space. No, I know, I know. I'm just saying... I'm, just, like, on yeah, a quantum yeah, yeah. level, they're going to have to change as well. Yeah. You know? But we can account for it. Like, we, we've, we've devised mathematics on a, like, on a large scale, on a macro scale. Mm-hmm. We just haven't devised mathematics on a micro scale. Right. It's not that it's, like... It was in that like um, that quantum physics book that physics book that I read. It's like it's just full of unknowns. That's all it is. We just don't know how to quantify the mathematics on that mm-hmm. level because we don't have the tools yet. But that's it. Yeah. It's not like it's not anything crazy, right? Yeah. No, no. I'm just saying. And what would happen? That's all. Again, we don't know what would happen. <laughs> so yeah, 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 true. I I guess I just, a new thought. Would have to come out some other way to. It's it's hard to say like, what if? It's hard to say that like. Um, it the, is yeah. the opposite of energy can't be created or destroyed would be energy, can be destroyed. Yeah, that's. Obvious. But then it's like, but that would kind of. Like I don't know how to how to interpret that one. Because we don't know how to interpret that one yet. No, but like if if it's it, true, I'm just saying it may not ever be true at all. But like, but what does that even conceptually look like? It's like, so what does that mean? Yeah, but all I'm saying is that we are only thinking based on what we know now, right? And that's what we have been grown up to think. Right, as you're saying, I think can I think, a new. I think that's more like, 
is it it either is or it isn't yeah so like at the moment we all we think it is no no no, i I mean like the whole energy can't be created or destroyed it's like that energy that's already in existence can't be destroyed Mm -hmm. but the energy that's not in existence that is the duality there you get what i'm saying it's like it's the yin and the yang again so the yin would be that energy is here the yang would be that there's no energy there so it's like it either is or it isn't in this plane of existence (laughs) right so like anything that is in this plane of existence cannot be destroyed but anything that's not in this plane of existence is already destroyed do you know what i'm saying okay maybe like i like i'm trying to like (laughs) Rationalize I know, what I you're know, saying. I, about yeah, like, I know. I know. I, I don't even know how to rationalize my what I'm saying. I'm just trying to throw it up there. Something different. But but I think I think that like in order for it to not <laughs> the opposite of energy can't be cre- created or destroyed is it's, is there is it, is, it isn't there yet. Yeah. Okay. It isn't in this plane of existence. Mm-hmm. You know. Like. I don't know, logically. But, I mean, at the end of the day, it's all about logic because it's like life right. is just a story we sell ourselves. Yeah. Um, I switched that from tell ourselves to sell ourselves because you have to just, like, prove it to yourself. That's true, yeah. You know, it's yeah. not really about telling yourself anything. So, <laughs> what can you sell yourself? <laughs> right? Um, and, like, right. so, like, at the end of the day, like, if I can't rationalize it, it doesn't matter. Because, like, if, if to me, rationally, it makes sense that energy can't be created or destroyed Mm -hmm. that's good enough because at the end of the day it's like it's just do i feel content yes so it's fine okay right but if you don't feel content then you're going to be constantly seeking for answers Mm -hmm. you know do you feel like you've um like not in like a pompous way but like do you feel like you've you're satisfied with the answers you've gotten in life um like do you like i guess the question is like would you say you understand yourself do you real like so like um bruce lee i'm reading this bruce lee book right now and he's like it's all about the highest attainment is being a realized being okay like do you think you're you've realized what does that mean though like like are you searching for answers for anything right now no yeah that's what i'm saying yeah totally but do you remember a point where you were searching for answers i guess so yeah i mean the general ones would be the answers. What are what are these? Like the religion thing at the time. Yeah, but I think I think that yeah. So totally, I think what that means really is like the answer we're really searching for is who are we and why are we here. Right. And right, like that's what everyone wants mm, to know. Mm-hmm. Like it doesn't mean like the answer I'm searching for is like why do you keep reading? It's like it's to clarify what I already know. Right. You know, but. I already know it, but it's not it's not in terms of like mathematics, like or like learning a new skill. I don't mean it like that. I mean it like have you answered in yourself like who are we and why are we here? Who are we, why are we here? Yeah, have you answered that in yourself, like that is a personal question, like it's not rhetorical. Yeah, no no no, like, no I know. Asked you to ask yeah, 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 yeah. Who are we? Uh I just think of uh just I just think Like of how do you answer that question? all right here? We'll go back and forth. You go first. Who are we and why are we here? What is your answer? It's just an organism. Okay. That well, needs to grow, I guess. And why are we here? Why are we here? Yeah. Uh, that, there is no answer to that. But are you solidified in those answers? Do you believe in those answers fully or are you questioning yeah. those answers? No. You, wait, what do you well, mean? No, I mean, no, to why are we here? Uh, no, I'm asking you, like, do you believe in those answers? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You do, right? Yeah. yeah. So you've, you've realized the biggest answers to life's major question, who are we and why are we here? Mm-hmm. So for me, it's who are we? We are whatever we want ourselves to believe. <laughs> why are we here? Whatever you want to tell yourself yeah. as to why you're here. Yeah. Right? But that, even though they're different, Mm-hmm. Right, it's like because we've answered those questions fully without a shadow of a doubt. Like I can't <laughs> shake your belief; you can't shake my belief. I I be- I know that that's the truth. Right, just as I'm sure you know that's 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 the truth. Yeah. No, I mean I don't so disagree that, with yours either, though. No, I agree. Yeah, 
Because, right? Because we, we... I looked at it so, more... No, right, because you're so secure in your belief system. So it's only when people are like, so I believe in... Somebody's like, I believe in God. And like, there's no God. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. you're, not, you're not secure enough. Uh, yeah, yeah, if, yeah. If you're like, I believe in God, there is no God. Okay, and that's mm. what you think. Then you are secure. So what we really seek in this world is security. Right. The security to know who are we and why are we here. Yeah. It's the big, life's biggest questions. Because yeah. like... And I guess the other third biggest question, because they always come in threes, is like, where do we go when we die? Mm-hmm. And like, that's what religion solves. Like, well, that's whole, what religion yeah tries to solve. Our well, our whole life pursuit. Yeah. Our whole life pursuit, like our whole like like outward life pursuit, mm-hmm. is the seeking out of the answer of who are we and why are we here. And then our whole afterlife pursuit, which is where spirituality comes in, is where do we go when we die? But the, yeah, the other question comes in: if, if say heaven's real, what the hell do you do in heaven? Isn't that Whatever living like you want to do? No, but it, that, that's the thing about living forever, right? Or like being exactly, bored. When you get bored, yeah. <laughs> yeah when you, no, yeah, for sure. <laughs> you, right, that just comes back up again. What would you do up there? Yeah, what they what they say, what they say? people who like decode um, like those spiritual texts and stuff. Heaven is like a perspective. That's why God's like Jesus said, heaven is here on earth. Okay, yeah. But yeah, but people think it's like this other place or this like mm-hmm. untangible realm. It's like no, no, you can look at you can be punched, like you can be shenied like I was saying. Yeah. And then you're either like, "Oh, this sucks, hell," or you could be like, "Oh, I'm stronger than this, heaven." Like heaven and hell are yeah, just yeah, perspectives. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, I've heard that too, and I think that's more pl- plausible thinking that may have been adjusted in its meaning. Or... Because like anything that has to do with like this like this falsity of what heaven is like this like greed sensation mm-hmm. of like heaven I get everything I want that's like that's built off of desire and desire is a byproduct of the mind so really it's right. just the mind who can't accept the reality of the situation mm-hmm. you know yeah. that it's not that important you know what I'm saying yeah yeah, yeah. like. We get so caught up in thinking we're important. Right. But the only thing that really thinks it's important is the mind. Yeah. Yeah. And mm-hmm. that's the thing that's afraid of dying. Mm-hmm. There is no fear. Think about it. All right, when you're a kid, you're fearless. You do anything. It doesn't matter about death, right? Because you don't think you're going to die. Right. And then you hit like an age where you're like, oh, no, I could die. And then you, you cling desperately to anything that will provide you with security Mm -hmm. whether it be like a 401k you know a stable job um a retirement package all these things that make you believe that you know you're not going to die right but you haven't accepted the fact that you are going to die so Mm -hmm. it's like well if you're going to die and your time is limited what are you gonna do with your time right i'm saying it's like i think but I think that's also partially why religion was such a control mechanism, mm-hmm. because it's like if we can if we can hold on to this idea of death long enough and hold it over people's heads, then that makes it like we like we can control you. Right. Okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. like okay, just like forego this for now, and then in heaven you'll get this. So just do my bidding right now because you're gonna get a bigger payout later on. You're like taking advantage of other people's insecurities mm-hmm. or their greed. Well, probably both. Yeah. You know, in order to control them. True. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do. That's that's my gripe with religion. But I think if everyone if everyone just realized the reality of the situation, like people would be a lot happier and they'd probably do the things that they want to do in life. You know? Mm-hmm. But then you also want people to do other things that not necessarily... That's true. Well, it goes back to your question of, like, <laughs> should everyone know this? And it's like, <laughs> no, because then yeah. we won't have the society we live in. Right. But I guess that's, like, that's from a greedy perspective of, like, I don't want to lose the society we live in. You know, but, Selfish like... Selfish perspective. Yeah. yeah, but what about, like, a greater society that could be potentially built 
off of like you know like people are like but I think this is so like airy fairy when people are like well we could have a society built off of love and understanding it's like okay bro kumbaya to you I just don't think it's gonna be possible yeah it's you, you know it's I don't, I don't think it'll ever be possible yeah it's, you, you know want to hear like a great example of why it wouldn't be possible sure because it's like okay then give me all your money <laughs> You know, like, hey, man, we could share everything, kumbaya. All right, give me all your money. Mm-hmm. No, but I can't. All right, well, it's selfish. It's greed. It's self, um, what do you call that? It's self-saving. Right. You know? We all have this, like, level of, um, because it's live now. Yeah. Nobody, nobody, we can't edit these. <laughs> so you're going to hear our dog either barking or, like, drinking water, right. which he's doing right now. Anyways, so... Um, we all have this like self-serving attitude where it's like, like I just don't believe it when people say like the whole world can be run off of love. It's not true though. Cause like, give me all your money. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. but that's, but then the people that do believe that they did give all their money and that's why Osho was so rich. Yeah, exactly. You Someone's going to be rich. <laughs> Somebody's <laughs> going to be rich. So it's like, yeah, you're going to live in this like deluded reality of, um, love and understanding mm-hmm. while the person that understands that it can't be all love and understanding is taking advantage of you. Yeah. Osho said a lot of great things. Like, I think he's a genius, mm-hmm. right? Simultaneously, he took advantage of a lot of people. Yeah, with that power that he had. Yeah. Exactly, because they were like, they were believing in his love and understanding, but he was like, haha, fool, it isn't just love and understanding. And I think, like, the again, go, going back to Taoism, that's, that's the highest point. It's like, if you're, if you're a Taoist, you believe in yin and yang. Mm-hmm. But people who are all about love and understanding, they're all about the yin. What about the yang, bro? You need hard work. You can't just lie around all day and do nothing. We'd be like animals. Right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We, all right, like, even if we could lie, lie in, around all day, that's also really selfish. So your idea of this love and understanding isn't even loved or understood. It's selfish mm-hmm. because you want it to be given to you. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, okay, yeah. I'm going to lie lie in bed all day in the hammock because my life is all about love and understanding. Right. Who's giving you the food? I think the only way this is that's potentially possible, you got to have the same people of the same like thinking. You live in a commune then. Yeah. but like, I, I think that's like it, in order to – But hey, what about this though? If or you believe live in, a in commune, the same kind of thing. If you yeah. live in a commune, the reason why I don't believe in um, love and understanding, I, I do to a degree. It's yin and yang, right? Like yeah. there is a limit to it. You also have to think about the yang. So like we live in a world of finite resources. And then the person with love and understanding is going to say, we, do, we don't live. It's an infinite universe mm-hmm. of infinite, under, like, infinite resources. Right. Okay, sure. We live in a commune. Who gets the biggest room? There's only one room, bro. Finite resources. Right. Okay, we live in a commune. Who gets the nicest hammock? Mm-hmm. Are we going to share that hammock? What about if I want to use the hammock when you want to use the hammock? Right. Who's going to get it? Are we just not going to use the hammock then? We're just going to be like, all right, because we both want it at the same time, nobody's going to use it. Okay, so you're just wasting resources. So either you're wasting resources or you have finite resources. We don't have infinite resources. They, in business, yeah. they call it an opportunity cost. Mm-hmm. In order to choose one thing, you have to give up another thing. Right. So that already so. tells you that we can't <laughs> live in a world of like love and understanding. Mm-hmm. There's no infinite resources. Mm-hmm. Right. What we can do is live in a world of compassion. Right? Because in compassion, you're like, okay, we only have one hammock, but I understand that you're probably sore. You can go first. That's compassion. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. seeing beyond yourself. Right. And I think that's what – I think people who talk about love and understanding are misguided. Or at least maybe they really mean seeing beyond yourself. Because when you see beyond your own perspective, only then can you live with compassion. Mm-hmm. Right? Um, so – I get on the subway, yeah. and then like, I I this literally happened today. I love my one spot on the subway mm-hmm. because like it's my back is it's like where the conductor is, right? Okay. Like I sit there, and then like my back's against the thing, so I can like re- read conductor. as I'm going, right? Okay. 
yeah, the yeah, train yeah. operator. Yeah, right. So then this family comes on with like a little girl and then she's like, there's like enough room for one other person, right? So they're like, okay, do you want to stand there to the little girl? And I'm like, okay, this is your little girl and you mm-hmm. and I'm taking up this half of the space. Compassion kicks in and I'm like, you know, I'm just going to move. It's okay. Like I can read another time. Right. So I move over and I let the mother and daughter stand in that like a little crevice. Yeah. Right. Was it out of love? No, it was out of compassion. Right? Because mm-hmm. it's like we don't have infinite resources. There was only one space. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like out of that one space, I saw beyond myself and I was like, okay, the compassionate thing to do would be like, you guys can like chill there, whatever. It is what it is. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Does make sense. Compassion. Compassion, yeah. Because compassion doesn't doesn't negate finite resources. Compassion understands that there's finite resources, and then is like, okay, for the greater good, mm-hmm. or for you, because. But like sometimes I don't want to move. You know what I mean? Like if there's like a bunch of young kids that go on, I'm like, I'm not gonna move out of that spot. I'm like, Dude, you guys can stand. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm going to use the spot and read. Because you guys are just going to chill there, whereas I want to read there. Mm-hmm. But you have to, like, see beyond yourself. You're like, you guys are fine. But that little girl and the mom, like, you guys are not fine. I will. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. Pretty good point. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Thoughts? Uh, I don't know. I don't know what else to add. I think that's, I don't know. What other thoughts should I have? Yes. No, that's good. <laughs> nice rant. Yeah, that but, yeah. was. Uh... <laughs> I don't know, because I think they're both connected. Like, because if you're like, oh, how is this related to death? It's like it is related to death, because all death is of the mind, and every scenario, any human interaction is mind based. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, good way to put it. Yeah. All right. Till next time. When we talk about hopefully something less intense. Actually, no, we should talk about the social media thing. And the Vice, we got a lot of topics on the go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to so, take down notes on Vice, though. Yeah, that was a good movie. That okay. was a good movie. We'll, uh, maybe mm-hmm. we'll do a movie review for Vice coming up soon. So, yeah. Yes. So, any final thoughts? I mean, just pray, I mean, pray to God. <laughs> That uh, we're, I don't know. I like that. I love that. I love that. Okay. Final thought. Um, oh, I had a really bad one, but I'm not going to say that one. Uh, everything will be granted in the kingdom of heaven. You have three wishes. Ooh, Aladdin's coming. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Until next time. All right. Take it easy. Peace. Bye.